Okay, so let's turn to 1 Kings <coughs> chapter 6, verse 38. Let's talk about Halloween. All right, so happy Halloween, folks. <laughs> Tonight is Halloween. In Halloween, what do Christians do during that day? Obviously, we don't celebrate it. But here's something that I'm going to give to you. Ready? <coughs> I'm going to teach Christians how they can... Glorify God on Halloween. What? Are you serious, Pastor? On a wicked day like that? Yeah, I'm going to teach you. Christians should glorify God on Halloween. But you're telling us to do trick or treat or stuff like that? <laughs> so let me first explain the origin of Halloween and explain how Christians should use this day for the glory of God. As a matter of fact, God considered that month to be something that you can use for His glory before they were celebrating this pagan day. So I'm going to explain some things here. First of all, Halloween, it, the origin came from two things. You ready? You probably didn't know this. It originated from two places. It originated from Celtic paganism. Yep. And then the second place, which you probably wouldn't guess, some of the onliners could probably guess so, is Roman Catholicism. <laughs> How about that? Are you kidding me, Pastor? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It came from these two places, Celtic paganism and Roman Catholicism. You'd be shocked. You'd be surprised. How did Catholics get involved in that, preacher? Well, here's the thing. Celtic paganism, it took it as Samhain. Or I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know if I'm going to even spell it right, too. So forgive me if this is spelled or pronounced wrong. So they took it from Samhain, and then Roman Catholicism, it originally was All Hallows' Eve. That's where Halloween came from. Halloween came from All Hallows' Eve. So for Celtic paganism, was Samhain, it was a day where they were... Uh, they were commemorating the spirits being active during that time. And that time, it was covering October 31st to November 1st. So from October 31st to November 1st, the spirits were very active during that time. That's what Celtic paganists, pagans believed. Whereas for Catholics, this is very interesting. They took it as a day of commemorating prayers to the dead saints. Now, you notice how very similar the spookiness is. Basically, the point is both religions, both beliefs, share the similarity of doing something with spirits during that day. That should be very troubling to you. That should be very troubling to you. The pagans, what they will do is that they will have a bonfire lit and celebrate around it. Because they believe that the fire it will protect them from the evil spirits right there. Whereas the Catholics, what they will do is that they will have fires lit around the graves so that they can pray to the saints on the dead graves and in fact I'm going to tell you this there are Christian churches I'm not about saved Christian churches who have their members go to the cemetery they light up some fires around the tombstones there and then some of those Christians would pray to their dead loved ones wow. and then they would have a red cross mm. a red glowing cross standing on it that's pretty spooky you would think it was a bunch of Satanists celebrating if you didn't look closely. Yeah. Abstain from all appearances of evil, as the Bible said. Yeah, yeah. Abstain from all appearances of evil. Now, in Chick Tracks, if you look at those Chick Tracks, Jack Chick, he actually wrote that the Celtic pagans, they would go door to door asking for human sacrifice. Now, this is very interesting to know. Remember Satan? You know what he likes the most? You know what he likes to ruin? When Satan was tempting Eve at the Garden of Eden, why did he aim for Eve? It was the age in dispensationalism, unless you're a Bible-believing dispensationalist, you'll know, it's the age of what? Innocence. You know what Satan loves to soil? He loves to soil innocence. That's the reason why he promotes fornication and homosexuality. He likes to destroy innocency. 
your innocent state. Now, who are, who are at the age of innocence? Children. That's why children at that age, the Lord God Almighty, at that stage of innocence, where they have no comprehension of the gospel or the sin nature, the Lord will allow them into heaven. But Satan, he loves to soil innocency. So during the Celtic paganism days, they would go around door to door asking for human sacrifice. Which particular human sacrifice does Satan enjoy when you read your Bible? Sacrifice of children. Babies. That's what Satan liked. That's why, think about it, folks. Why is Halloween aimed for who? You notice that? Door to door. Door to door, children asking for trick or treat. How about that? But if that's not enough, so let's explain a little bit more right here. If they gave the human sacrifice to those uh, druids, yep. then the druids, they would leave a jack-o'-lantern in front of their door yep. to ward off the, the spirits who would harm them. Now, if they didn't give the human sacrifice, then the druids, they would either paint a pentagram or a hexagram of blood on the doorpost so, the, so that a curse can fall upon them. That was... The trick. See? Yeah. yeah. That was a trick. Yeah. Now, here's the treat. Roman Catholicism, what they did during the era of the Catholic Church, children would go door to door during that, during that time, asking for soul cakes, and they would pray for the dead as a reward if the person at the door gave them a soul cake. See, that's a what? Treat. treat. Wow. I didn't that Trick one. or treat. That's a good. How about that, folks? How about that? How? Dirty How dirty. about that? These two are very intertwined. You'd be surprised. Oh, it's not a Christian religion. It's definitely not a Christian religion. It's a Christian religion born out of paganism combined. Yeah. Amen. That's what it is. And this one is complete paganism itself. This is where children got the idea of doing trick or treat, see? And this is why Satan, Halloween, is aimed toward children going door to door. Isn't it sad that children would go door to door for Halloween, but they will not go door to door during visitation? Isn't it sad that parents would not take their children out to door to door with them for soul winning? Wouldn't that be the greatest thing? I'll tell you one thing, that's what I did. My family, I want to thank God that my dad, before he even became a pastor, my dad took me out door-to-door -door soul winning. That's how it should be, folks. But you see how Satan tainted door-to-door -door soul winning? He did it with Halloween. You've got to realize that this door-to-door -door soul winning was long at the book of Acts, long before the Celtic Druids. Look how Satan corrupted it. Now, where children get the idea of being dressed up in costumes, it was at least by the 16th century. At least by the 16th century in Scotland, and Scotland is near the Celtic paganism homeland, see? In Scotland, the children were dressed up in costumes at least by that time, the 16th century. This may have been a tradition. They may have been following a tradition of people who were dressing up like the dead spirits. Hence the idea of dressing up in spooky costumes. Halloween type of costumes. Why were they dressing up like the dead spirits, the dead souls? Because it was as a it was in order to protect them from the other spirits they would claim. Yeah. But they would dress up like the dead souls and they would receive the offerings from door to door on their behalf. That was at least by the 16th century they were doing that in Scotland. So we see from all this we how Satan wants to take the most wicked holiday this is the most wicked holiday to do the most wicked kind of thing, to taint little children. This is why Christians, Bible believers, strongly believe in never having children participate in this kind of a day. Amen. We strongly are against that. But here's the thing is that Christians, what we ought to do with our children is glorify God at this time. During this time, we should be glorifying God with that. We shouldn't let 
the wicked people, the lost world, take advantage of this day. We Christians should take advantage of ourselves. Now, you might say, how so, preacher? How can we take advantage of that? Well, what you could do, the Bible shows two things. Go to 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 38. The first thing you can do during this time of Halloween is worship God. Wait, 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 preacher. I thought we were supposed to avoid it. Yeah, worshiping the devil. Doing the, do, following these practices. That doesn't mean you can't worship God. That's what we're doing right now. On Halloween, you know what we're doing? We're worshiping God tonight. <laughs> That's what we're doing tonight. We're having prayer. We're having Bible study, discipleship, church attendance, everything. That's what we should be doing. Look at, if you don't believe me, look at 1 Kings chapter 6. That's what they did at October. At October, that was when the believers got together and worshiped God. Now, one thing you got to understand is October, oct, hence octagon, eight sides. It's not supposed to be the tenth month. It was originally supposed to be the eighth month. In the Bible, the eighth month, hence, is October. I don't know if you knew that before. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was because of the mess up of our calendars that we jumped October to the tenth month now. But in the month of October, this is what believers did. They... That was when Solomon's temple for worshiping God was finished. It was at October. Look at 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 38. And in the eleventh year, in the month bull, which is the eighth month, see October, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof, and according to all the fashion of it, so was he seven years in building it. Look at that right there. The temple for worshiping God was finished at the month of October. This is why it's a good thing that we would come to church at the month of October to worship the Lord. That's what we should be doing. That's why there are some Bible-believing churches who will have what they call a harvest festival to replace the Halloween. Ah. In this harvest festival, what they would do with the children is that instead of doing this paganism, Catholic stuff in Halloween, they would take that as an advantage for worshiping God together. And during this harvest festival, they would have uh, what they call a harvest festival. They would give out candies. And then they would have the children dress up as biblical characters as the costumes. So there are things like that. Now, we as a church, because we're small, we don't even bother doing that. I just want to avoid <laughs> Halloween and Christmas as much as possible, actually. That's just me. But who knows, maybe when we grow more and more and we have a whole bunch of kids, we should think about the children. We want to give a good time to the children. Yeah, and nice. when we give a good time to the children, we don't want them to covet the world on the good times and follow the ways of the wicked world. That's we got to show them a good time on the things of God and worshiping God. That's what it should be. And here's another thing what you could do. Look at, this is my favorite. Go to Zechariah chapter 1 verse 1. Let's close it here tonight. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 1. This is my favorite. You know what you should do at Halloween? <laughs> you should preach repentance. Amen. That's what you should do. Wouldn't that be a good time at Halloween to preach the gospel? Preach people to repent? Wouldn't that be a good time to lead children to salvation? You know what is the best time? I don't know if you ever thought about this. You know what the best time to lead children to salvation is? It is Halloween. I don't know if you realize that. Do you know why? Children are the easiest to win to Jesus Christ. Amen. They will listen. Because they're at this, they're close to this age of innocence. That's why. Not only that, it is a time where all the children finally get out. And when they get out, you have a chance to witness to them. So many children all at once. Zechariah 1.1, 1, 1, in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, look at this, at this eighth month, at October, the word of the Lord, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. That's good. You know what we should do at Halloween? Turn to the Lord. To turn to the Lord. As a matter of fact, Chick Tracks, they've been very famous for its comic style 
and having hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of children receiving those comic tracks. There are some Bible-believing Christians who will put the chick tracks in different colors on a silver tray, and when the children knock on the door, trick or treat, they give them an option of which track to pick out. And children, they all grab it. The churches, they'll have a... Uh, They'll have their trunk open at the church parking lot. And when all these kids gather at the church parking lot, what do they do? They give out uh, chick tracks over there. Or get a chance to what? Preach the gospel at them. There's your street preaching opportunity right there. This is a great chance. If you don't believe me, the American Track Society said that 4 million tracks alone have been ordered for just the day of Halloween. Can you believe that? Just for the occasion of Halloween, they had 4 million tracks sent out. That shows it is a right time of harvest, is Halloween. That's how you can glorify God on Halloween.